Hello, I'm back again in front of the green screen and I'm still experimenting on how to make this work, which is actually why my hair is in a ponytail right now. It turns out that when your hair is curly, it's even more difficult to key your, your outline against a green screen. But, you know, whatever, that's not the important part. I'm here to talk about The Witcher Season 2. Now, a couple of years ago, I reviewed Season 1 and I said that I just, um, I didn't like it that much. Now, I, I liked it more than I disliked it, but I didn't think it was a particularly good show. Like, I had issues with the story, mainly being the, the timeline, and I had issues with a lot of the characters being unlikable. Uh, but after watching season two all the way through and thinking it over a little and mulling it over, I, I just don't think The Witcher's a good show. I think it's pretty crappy. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Now, I want to make it clear that my thoughts on this are just on the show. I've never read the books, at least not yet, and I have never played any of the games, so those are not coloring my opinions at all. Like, I'm not looking at this as an adaptation. I don't care if they change things. I don't care if people think, oh, well, this was done better in the books. Like, I, I really don't care. I'm looking at the show on its own, and the show on its own is not good. It's, it's pretty crappy. So, uh, to recap, Geralt of Rivia, the main character, is a monster hunter. He's what's known as a witcher, and they are these guys that have, like, magical experiments done on them, so they're a little bit more powerful than regular humans, and then they go through a bunch of training and stuff so that they can go out and slay monsters. And he winds up taking care of this uh, princess by the name of Ciri because, well, honestly, just because the plot demands it. You know, the, the whole reason that he winds up having to take care of her is because years ago he helped out her parents and when they said, hey, you helped us out, do you want a reward? He just kind of said, uh, I want your firstborn child. Like, it, that wasn't his exact wording, but that's basically what he was saying. And I don't know why he said that. Like, it, it doesn't even come across as, like, a joke or anything. It just feels like the writers were saying, okay, we need a reason for him to have to take care of a princess later on, so we'll just have him say this very strange thing. Uh, and, yeah, her... Her kingdom has been overrun, and her family's been killed, so he has to take care of her. And meanwhile, the, an evil empire uh, called Nilfgaard is invading and taking over a bunch of the northern kingdoms where Geralt and the others live. And plus there's a bunch of racism and stuff against elves, mostly. Now, when this season starts, we have Geralt taking Ciri to uh, this fort where all of the remaining witchers live, or at least most of the remaining witchers live, and his mage girlfriend, Yennefer, just has no more powers anymore, she doesn't have magic for whatever reason, uh, while at the same time Ciri is discovering she has some strange magic powers that people d don't really understand, and so they're trying to work with that. And at the same time, there's people that are trying to stop Nilfgaard from invading and taking over, even though Nilfgaard honestly seems a lot nicer than the people who are currently in charge. So first things first, I thought that without the timeline issues, this story would be better, but eh, not really. Like, in the first season, if, if you hadn't seen it, what they did was they had flashbacks to a bunch of different things that had happened in Geralt's past or in Yennefer's past, uh, which kind of tied into their characters and tied into some of the story that was going on now. Uh, but it was switching back and forth between them without any real indication that that was what was going on. And sometimes it would go back like decades or centuries, and because these are characters that either don't age or age very slowly, it's difficult to even tell that they're supposed to be older or younger until someone talks uh, something in the dialogue, and it just made it kind of confusing to sit through. And I, I know that that was just difficulty in the adaptation process, because apparently like they had to adapt a bunch of short stories, which was what The Witcher was originally, uh, before the author tried to make it into a longer series. But that doesn't change the fact that it is confusing if you're uh, not familiar with it. And I'll, I will say that season two at least doesn't have that problem, but it's still just not that great. Like, you still have multiple storylines that don't have much overlap. And th there's some overlap sh between them, sure, but not that much. And uh, they're not all equally interesting. Like, when Geralt and Ciri were... when, when we were following them, uh, particularly when they're at the Witcher Fortress, I thought, I, I thought it was okay, I guess. 
but everything else, whether we're talking about Yennefer or uh, the mages trying to stop Nilfgaard or the elves doing their thing, I just didn't really care, and I'll get more into that later, but I, I just wasn't that interested in it, and it didn't really tie into what was going on with Geralt, so the whole time I'm just thinking, okay, can we please get back to Geralt? Like, this is not important to the story, I just want to skip these parts. Now, Yennefer's storyline, at least at the beginning, is mostly her uh, working against Nilfgaard and also helping out some elves along the way while trying to get her magic back. And the thing is, she comes across as kind of selfish and not very heroic here. Like, even though she's doing good things, like, she does uh, stop and help, like, elves and stuff that are in the process of getting pogromed, but it doesn't really feel like she's on her way to get her magic back, like, which is, you know, kind of a selfish goal. It doesn't feel like she's on her way to do that, and then she's stopping and sacrificing along the way to help these people because, oh, these people need help. It feels more like she is just making a brief detour along the way, and it doesn't really feel like it's, uh, she's sacrificing anything or even that it's inconveniencing her. It feels like she wouldn't be stopping to help these people if it wasn't along the way to her other goal. So she doesn't really seem like a hero or like a good person, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, you don't need to have the main characters be good people necessarily, and in season one, it's not like she was the nicest person ever either, but the show treats her like she's a hero, and so that just comes across as very contradictory, and it honestly just doesn't work that well. And then in Geralt's story, we have him training Ciri in, like, some Witcher stuff, and also it turns out that she may hold the ability to make more Witchers because, uh, like, witchers are a dying breed, they don't know how to make more of them at this point, or rather they know how, but they're just unable to. And then there's also some weird monsters coming along that Geralt has never seen before, and then they're investigating what's going on there. And like I said, this storyline is like, it's okay, I guess, in a lot of ways. Uh, it just has a bad climax. Uh, I think the relationship between Geralt and Ciri is good. You know, I don't... I don't have a lot to add there. I just think that, you know, it seems as though they are both kind of frustrated being in this situation, but at the same time, neither of them wants the other one to come to any harm. So it does genuinely feel like kind of a fatherly bond, just not a traditional fatherly bond. And the biggest issue with like the story and everything is that I just could not care less about anything going on. And the reason I couldn't care less about anything going on is because every character in this show is just a miserable asshole. Like, I really mean it. All they do is brood. Nobody ever laughs or smiles or talks about anything other than how much the world sucks and how they're all suffering and how existence is awful. Like, that that's all they ever do. It's like they took the population of Reddit and made it into a show. Now, I kind of mentioned that before with Yennefer, where she is treated as being heroic, but she's honestly just being selfish and it doesn't come across as heroic. I think Geralt is okay, not because of anything in the writing, really, but mostly because Henry Cavill just gives a really good performance. And I even mentioned in season one that his performance was one of the standout parts of the entire show. Like, I think he was really good in this role. And he has fewer humorous moments in season two than he does in season one, though, so there's there's not much to endear me to him other than he's taking care of Ciri and he's really cool when he slays monsters, which, I mean, that's fine and all, but it doesn't make me like him all that much. And this applies to the world as well. The world as a whole feels completely irredeemable. Like, I want Nilfgaard to win. Like, the, the Northern Kingdoms in this season are actively committing a genocide against the elves, and it's portrayed as being as horrible as it is or as horrible as that sounds, whereas Nilfgaard is actually helping out the elves and giving them safe refuge and everything. I was like, these are supposed to be the bad guys? Now, I know what they were probably going for here was to try and make things morally gray. You know, they were trying to make it like, oh, the good guys do some awful things too, but the bad guys are still the evil empire, so we have to fight against them. But the thing is, usually when they do that, they'll have it so that the hero is trying to protect whatever the current status quo is. Uh, like, you see that in a lot of spy movies, you know, like, uh, the villain's gonna launch the nukes, so we gotta stop him from doing that. And 
in oftentimes in like fantasy stories like this, it'll be oh, the Dark Lord is coming in to destroy everything, and the hero is just trying to protect the kingdom. You know, they aren't really trying to improve the world necessarily, they're just trying to prevent it from being destroyed. And in a lot of modern fantasy series, they will come out and acknowledge, like, okay, yeah, that that's not perfect, but in order to fix that, they will just make the bad guys so over-the-top evil that it becomes really clear what's going on, and... Uh, that the heroes have to put a stop to this. In this, it's almost like they did it the other way around, and it doesn't come across as morally gray. It comes across as Nilfgaard are the good guys, and we're just watching the bad guys plot and scheme, and we're supposed to be on their side. And, well, that, that, how am I supposed to care about that? These are, these are awful people, and I don't want them to succeed. The only likable character in this entire show is Yasker the Bard, and... The reason that he's so likable is because he does things other than brood. You know, he smiles and laughs and sings and makes jokes, and he, he is a decent guy, yes. He does help out the, his friends, and he helps out uh, the good guys saving people and all that. But in addition to being a, a heroic guy, he is just likable. He's nice. Like, the scene where he's singing to some rats, or excuse me, where he's singing to some mice in his prison cell is the best scene in this entire season. Gordon, you're amazing. Talent recognizes talent. Let's go again. Three, four, and lock me That's up. It. And stop I'm me up shit. and throw away the keys. Oh, oh, oh. Cause you're too fucking with me. Now here's the thing. The modern trend of dark fantasy uh, was largely inspired by Game of Thrones. And Game of Thrones was a very dark show. Yes, there was some awful, awful things that went down in there, but we still had characters make jokes. You know, Tyrion was still really funny. Uh, we still had characters do things for fun. You know, they weren't just sitting around thinking about how awful life was and getting drunk, and we saw them care about each other. You know, we saw them s care about their uh, romantic partners or their family, and even the bad guys, when they did bad things, often did it because they were attached to people they love, like a Probably the best example of that would be in the pilot episode uh, when Jamie Lannister tries to murder Bran Stark. Like, he just straight up pushes a child out a window and he winds up surviving, but he tried to murder him. And he did that uh, to protect not just himself, it wasn't just out of self-preservation, but he's trying to protect his sister Cersei. And because he loves her. It's a weird incestuous love, but he does love her, and so he's doing bad things out of love, even though he's the one of the bad guys for most of the show. What I'm getting at is that the world and some of the people in it, even though they were pretty uh, dreary a lot of the time, the world and some of the people in it still felt worth saving. The Witcher just straight up doesn't have that. And finally, my last real point here is that the fight choreography is bad. Which is weird, because in the first season, I thought the fight choreography was extremely good. That was one of the highlights of the show. And the only one that I really disliked was... Uh, in the final episode when Geralt is fighting all those uh, ghouls, I believe, and that that one was just, it didn't work. And the reason for that was because they had to make Geralt look like a cool monster-slaying hero who could take on hordes of enemies with no sweat, but they also had to get him hurt so that the plot could move along. And trying to combine those two things, it just made the whole fight look stupid. And in this season, though, the fights range from being, like, okay, like, average what you would expect from a television show to just not good. Like the climax, the fight in the climax is not good. It's not well choreographed. And uh, some minor spoilers here, but uh, basically the climax is uh, the last remaining witchers versus a couple of giant dragon lizard things. And uh, part of it is the choreography, part of it is the editing. But this fight just goes all over the place. Like, both sides, or combatants on both sides, rather, switch their targets a bunch. Like, they never seem like they're just trying to actually kill each other. It feels like they're trying to put on a show, almost. And so they'll be like, I'm fighting you for a minute. Whoo, now I'm over here fighting you for a minute. And this guy's just kind of standing over there, not doing anything. And, I mean, I know it's kind of a cliche for uh, kung fu movies or whatever, where the heroes will just fight one guy at a time because the others will not do anything, but it feels even weirder when 
the good guys are doing that because the, the witchers that are fighting these dragon things do that several times. And I don't, I don't know, when you get to the end of the, of the whole fight, it just makes the, the other witchers feel kind of incompetent and it just feels like Geralt and the like major, major characters only win because the plot demands it. So I don't know, that's, uh, that's about it. You know, this was definitely a downgrade from season one. I don't know if my opinion is very popular on that. A lot of people seem to be enjoying this season more, but I don't, don't really care. That's, I have always just spoken my opinion here. If that's a problem, then I'll get over it. Uh, the Witcher wasn't very good. Uh, it's not a good show and that's all. Goodbye. If you watched this far, thank you so much. By this point, most people have just uh, taken to the comments section to tell me to kill myself. I wouldn't be able to do videos like this without all my patrons, whose names you see here. And a special thanks to my $10 and up patrons. Apo Savalainen, Eris Targaryen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodes, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Echo, Great Grebo, Karkat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Madison Lewis Bennett, Marilyn Roxy, Matthew Bordreau, Michael Weingartner, Microphone, Peep the Toad, Return of Cardamom, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Tom Beanie, and of course, Vevictus. All of you are just absolutely the best. If you want to get your name on here, consider becoming a patron. If you don't want to do that, you could always support the channel here on YouTube, or just like the video, comment, and subscribe to my channel. All those are great, and uh, that's all for my takes for today. Goodbye.